Well, good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Metropolitan Gymnasium here in Tokyo. It has been a fantastic day already of Olympic qualification in the women's event. We've had three matches. Italy, Thailand and the Netherlands have already started their campaign brilliantly. We've got eight teams here in Tokyo, four of which will go home happy and go towards Rio with great anticipation. Here is one of the heroines, of course, of Japanese volleyball. Saori Komuro has been absolutely brilliant in her career. Here's the Peru team, the team in opposition today. It's a young team, and if you have a look at the, the ages, really, really very, very mixed. Three 18-year-olds, three 19-year-olds, there is a little bit of expertise as well, of course, at the top with uh, Mirta Uribe, the captain at 31 years old. But uh, they're going to be up against the wall here because this is now a Japanese team and fans that will be expecting qualification. As I said, Saori Kimura, number three, the captain, has uh, now got a huge amount of experience and she will certainly be leading the pack. But there is also the youngster as well, the 19-year-old that is, everything has been expected of her, Serena Koga, who is uh, the outside hitter, is really, really impressive. Manabi Masayoshi is the coach again, and I have to say he has done a great job with his team. There's been a little bit of uh, disappointment over the last year. They didn't finish too far up the Asian table in the championships, but... Uh, they will certainly be expecting to go through to a record 12th time at the Olympic Games. We are now preparing a, a full stadium here for a dramatic scene. And uh, certainly the final match. In fact, every match will involve Japan here over the next uh, few days. Seven matches for each of these eight teams. And it's going to be an extraordinary atmosphere as we build up and get beyond that first. Here we go, presentation of the teams and the national anthems coming up in just a couple of moments. Please remain standing and direct your attention to the national flags for the national anthems of the contending teams. We will begin by the national anthem of the Republic of Peru.
The Sumba rendition of the Japanese national anthem. Of course, we are all reminded of the fact that we had commemoration also, that sport is fine, but life obviously has lots of challenges and the Komoto earthquakes there. A little moment of silence from the whole FIVB family for those victims who have suffered and are suffering from those devastating effects. But um, we start out with some recognition of that, but I tell you, we are going to be getting some fireworks in just a while. We'll have the introduction of the teams, but they're the ball boys and ball girls saying hi and thanks to the Japanese team. A nice little touch that, I like that. And look at the, uh, Susanna, I can also see there already the umpire. Susanna Jativa will be in the chair for this one. One of the most experienced referees in the competition. And in fact, I've known her for many, many years. And uh, all these referees under the fantastic leadership and tutelage of Mr. Hassan, who's having his final year as the leader of the referees delegation. Mr. Hassan, 80 years old now, extraordinary career he's had. And, uh, He's led some brilliant referees over many, many years. Here they come. Here's Susanna on the left. Presentation of the international referees. The first referee is Miss Susanna Rodriguez from Spain. Susanna Rodriguez Jativa is uh, at the whistle. The second referee is Mr. Taufik Udaya from Tunisia. Tunisia's. Taufik Vudaya is assisting and will be on this side as the camera sees it. Right, now, the introduction of the teams. A lot of respect around here, but uh, drama just about to take place right here. This tenseness. Presentation of the starting players, Liberos and coaches. Team Peru, number two, Captain Mirta So the starting lineup then for Peru, Mirta Uribe, 31 years old, leads the way, the captain. Rueda, number three, is the wing spiker as well. Munoz is there, that's number six. And uh, you can see the back line there is Angela Leva, together with uh, Palacios. And uh, yeah, the coach there is uh, Mauro Masrila. And it's good to see again some really good money coming into the play. Herbal Life supporting uh, Peru. Supplement drink. Uh, and I have to say, they've done a great job. But here is the Japanese team. And again, I'm quite surprised at the moderate level of support here at the moment. But uh, the Japanese team will certainly be out to really, really give a great account of themselves. Going for the 12th occasion that they will be going for the Olympic Games. Of course, back in the heyday, in 64 and 76, they actually won the gold medal. 64, of course, here in Tokyo and also in Yokohama. They played their matches, so... Wouldn't they love to do a repeat of that in 2020? Ha! Ah, my goodness me. You'd want to be here if it happens, let me tell you. 
But the uh, the lineup, you can see right in the center at the back is uh, Miyu Nagoaka, the opposite. On the right at the back is the captain, Saori Kumura. We've seen the libero come on, and she is a sensational player, let me tell you. Absolutely superb. Arisa Sato has had so many accolades over the years. But it's going to be a Peruvian team to start. There is Kimura Sauri. There's two Sauris actually in the squad. Sakoda as well. But uh, she is at number 16, not on court at the moment. But the, no confusion. Here we go. It's the fourth match, first day of competition. It's the Olympic qualifiers, and it's the first point for Japan. A lovely little tickle over the top there from Har Haruyo Shimamura. Shimamura comes to the line now. She's got a heavily strapped leg, right leg in particular. But let's see what kind of service she's going to come up with. It's a floater with the run. The block is not quite good enough, so Peru on the scoreboard here. And of course, there are no novices to Olympic success. Although they're ranked at 21st in the world, and they've not been at the Olympics since 2000 in Sydney, they certainly have had their glory days. Back in the 1980s, they won silver at the 1988 Seoul Olympics. OK, we're going to see a lot of that, let me tell you. Miga, uh, Miyu Nagaoka. Left-handed, of course, and from that uh, position right in the center, Nagaoka finds an easy point. 2-1. The reverse is good, but uh, no, it's not going to happen. That's a lovely reverse set. And you have to say, the setters, they've got Alexander Munoz as the setter for Peru. And she is, well, she's fairly young, 23 years old, but she put up a nice set there. Good work. The libero, Sato, preparing to receive. She doesn't get it, but Saudi does. It's all quick stuff, and of course, nerves are, will be certainly jangling at the moment. Yeah, great finish. Lovely work from Akimayu uh, Maruyama. It was not rushed. It was a short set, beautifully dispatched, good timing. 3-2 Japan, first set. Again, the floater to midway. Good block! We love to see that. That is what the crowd absolutely get excited about. Elika Araki, the middle blocker, does exactly what she says on the tin. She is a superb blocker. Look at this. Strong left arm, down-angled, beautifully dispatched. It's Koga. Koga, the star 19-year-old. She has got a huge future in the sport. Again, it's a good reverse, and it's a lefty coming from that opposite position. It's almost a, an outside hitter because she's a left-hander. But watch this. Great, great uh, little touch there, half a metre or so. And a fabulous dispatch down that right post with a left-hander. 5-2 now. Koga doing her job, keeping it in play a little bit more. Top spin on that. Good save, Koga again. It'll touch, nice anticipation by the Libero. And that was a touch, I think. Yeah, Susanna's given it to Peru. 3-5. Real good excitement here. Peru not expecting to challenge the hosts. But you never know, they're a young team with lots of ambition. Japan being greeted with every single score. I tell you, this, this the whole Metropolitan Gymnasium absolutely packed out, sold out for every Japan match. You'd expect it, I guess, but very impressive. 6-3. Here we have now Araki. 
That is a really good bit of blocking there, keeping that ball alive, and Saudi puts it over. Another chance to see the defensive block, it's not needed. Here we go, Saudi comes up with a big hit from outside hitter's position. But that is a, a, an infringement at the net, Susanna spotted it, it's not going to be a challenge. I can tell you now that uh, the coach, Mauro Masal Maras Squillo, actually looked around to see whether or not he should challenge, and there will be opportunities to challenge. Two every set. Whether or not the ball is in or out, or there's a net infringement. Look at that little floater, beautifully played by Araki. Oh, and that's gone out. Oh, it's been given to Japan, that's interesting. Technical timeout is 8 and 16. The first technical, Japan leading 8 3, and she's got that unbelievably engaging smile whenever she's successful. But uh, Saudi Kumara has uh, really, really celebrates. It's great to watch. Manabe is setting out the, uh, the challenges here. And the Brazilian coach, Marasquillo, he's done a good job, and the, I have to say, they, are, they love their coach. They are so respectful, these girls. Watching them in training and practice, there wasn't one extra sound listening, learning, trying to put into action everything that he has requested. Well, if Peru don't qualify this time round, I tell you, watch out for them next time because they could well be back here in Japan in 2020. They are improving all the time. There's a good group of youngsters. We've got the beat continuing. 90 seconds, of course, for this technical timeout. 60 for a normal timeout. They are looking very solid at 8-3. Here we go. Business back in play. Araki again comes up. The 31-year-old has got a huge presence and experience. And there's Kimura. Here's Araki. Team average age is 25. So Araki's on the high side at 31. Yeah, OK, off the top of the block, and Peru, after that particular timeout, will go to the line at 4-8. Angele Lieva will serve it. Stand and deliver. Oh, that's a great pickup. Nicely defended. Here we go, it's short, it's sharp, and it should have been to ground. Another chance here, and that's going to be off the block again. Two in a row, 5-8. Nice play by the outside hitter. Watch her come, and delivers nicely. No chance there for Shimamura on the left, and Nagoka on the right side, defending. There's the lefty again, coming into business. I tell you, it's very, very off-putting when you see the opposite coming in with a left stroke, because the shoulder is, in fact, further away from the net. So it means that she's got that little bit of extra pace to uh, pick up, and she's got the distance from the block. That's why the outside hitter normally is so, so uh, devastating. But that's a poor service from Nagoka. 6-9. Nagoka from Hisamitsu Springs Club. Opposite side of the net, looking through the net, is Frias, the 18-year-old. It's a strange run from deep. Saori does well. Saori comes back, plays it over the top. Still there, good block. This is a better rally. It's still gone there, in play. Here we go, set it, kill it. Oh, what a great save again. Best rally of the match so far. Little touch no good from the setter. 
Here we go. From the back line, it's another brilliant piece of play. Fantastic rally. Watch out. Hold on to your hats here because this is exploding this stadium. There we go, off the block, and that's a beauty. She missed the service, made up for it immediately. Miyu Nagoaka. Fantastic rally. Wow, that set the Metropolitan absolutely alight here. Explosions are plenty, and particularly from that young lady, 24-year-old Nagoka Mio, the opposite, the lefty, off the net, but it's still there, 10-6. Again, a little touch. Good scrambling recovery. Lovely touch there from Koga this time. And there's another big block. Wow, these girls are intent on keeping this ball alive. There's the big one from Koga! Got skill in the book. Of course, you'd expect that from an outside hitter. But she can play defense, she can play... And it is Peru's play. 7-11. Kimura could not take that one. Look at that from deep. Beautiful. Heavy, heavy top spin by Angela Leva. There she is. Little nod. The coach was really approving of that. That ooh, it was a deep one, but can't to be played. What a good block that was. Fantastic block for 8-11 now. Watch this one. Perfect. It wasn't a bad set. Koga did her best there. Ultimately thwarted by a brilliant block by uh, Carla Rueda. They're back within three. Peru beginning to shape up a little bit, getting some rhythm here. Koga blocked again. Two in a row from the outside hitter. Can you believe that? 9-11. Wow. They might have to change their tactics a little bit here. But Koga, well, she had her chances. It wasn't a bad set. But obviously wasn't picking the line, whether it was the run-in line, the approach jump, or the, the full swing. It's just not deceiving. But, ah, this is an interesting camera here. Back for a while. Oh, great work. Fabulous from Mia. Still there. Gosh, they're playing well. Both teams really giving us a great exhibition. From deep. Great save. A lovely scramble. Crowd loving that one. Big hit. Lovely block. Fraud, it's out of play directly. It's Japan's ball. And point, 12-9. Koga's up for that one. She touched it. It was a really, really good frying pan save. What a beautiful dive and pickup. Excellent work there from Miyashita. 12-9. It's out. Straight out of play. We haven't seen too many errors on the service line. There was one, 10, 12. Again, atmosphere is superb here. Frias. Young to be playing at this level. It's a beautiful floaty dropping serve. I mentioned it earlier, it's like coming off the edge of a cliff. Just look at that, it absolutely died. Koga couldn't pick it. 11-12. Kimura in the center, expecting to receive this one. And she does. Whoa, where were the opposition there? My goodness, that's amazing. Kimura said it now. Oh, from receiving, and then it went out wide, and uh, Nagoka did the business without fuss. 13 11. 
Miyashita with the ball. Haruka Miyashita, 21 years old. And that's in. Again, powerful play. Watch out for those wing spikers. Look at her coming in great angle. And it's through maybe just a little bit over the block as well. Yeah, it was through the block. Got to get a bit closer. 12 13. Peru putting up a good fight after struggling in the early stages. Ooh, that was a, a dig spin. Does well there. Well done, Libero. For the third time, Koga is denied. Fantastic work in block defense by Peru. Koga coming from the outside hitter's position. You do not expect her to be missing three in the early stages like that. Wow. The onus is definitely on the attacker to get that ball down. She should have played a few more down the line, maybe. Yeah, once again, the foxy lady, Miyu Nakaoka, plays it with a dink over the top of the defensive block and wins the point at 14.30. Wow, this is fascinating. Didn't expect Peru to come nibbling back like this. Koga at the serve line, she was good. Yes, obviously, an open play as well. That's gone. Huge hit. Peru know how to hit these spikes, I tell you. Look at this, watch it. From deep, and look at the angle. It's a fabulous angle from Rueda. Look at the way she plays. She knew what she was trying to do, and nothing that uh, Araki could do in defense. Totally outside her cover. Is Raider again at the line? 14 all, first set. Uh, just a little bit of nail biting here by Japan, but that settled well. Araki gets her own back immediately. Good work from the middle blocker. There you go, great set. And immediately the two number 11s line up. Klarivet. Ijeskas, Ijeskas is uh, also the middle blocker. And another poor piece of play. She'll probably be replaced now. And she goes off. On comes the uh, Libero. There you go, that's the normal way of things. Araki after playing the service. Is replaced by the Libero. Arisa Sato. Oh! Sato does well there. That's a huge challenge, and doesn't he do well? Arisa Sato. And that's off the block. That's Japan's ball. It's 16 15. Now that was Arisa's, it's okay, it's to the second technical and first one, of course, Japan reached that technical timeout. The first, they've done it again with the second one, but uh, great piece of play by the Libero Arisa. The big surprise at the moment is that Koga has tried three times and been blocked three times from the outside hitter's position. 16-15 the score. Uh-huh. <laughs> Isn't that great? Don't you love it? I don't read the Japanese language, but uh, I think you probably guess as well what that says. The clappers doing their job. The golden clappers. Will it be another gold year for Japan? Time will tell. Going for their 12th time at the Olympic Games. USA have uh, made 11, Russia, I think, also the same. So they're in big company here, the Japanese. Although their recent performances haven't been of the highest order. They've won six medals at the Olympic Games alongside the Soviet Union. London four years ago, they beat Korea to, for the bronze medal match to Japan. So they can do better than that, my goodness. The whole of... The Peruvian... 
Right, we're back into the business end of the first set. It's all looking for the line now, coming into the home straight. Is uh, the opposite, Nagoka. Great Arisas. Oh, and that was a, I think, double hit. It was. Susanna picked it, and it certainly looked a bit suspicious, even from my distance. 16 all. Arisa did well initially, and then that was the double hit by Shimamura. Stand and deliver there from the service line. From deep, in comes uh, Nagoka again. Arisa pings it up. Nagoka's again there. Fails. Good defense. Good intervention there from Saudi. And then. Fabulous work. Now that is good reading of a rally, isn't it? Saudi does well. Watches that little dink over the center. Looking for the gap. Picks it up. And then it's a point to Japan. You've got to be really intelligent in this uh, in this sport. The coaches can only do so much. Oh, good reverse. That is a really good reverse. It was quick, and did you see? Flat over the net. No time for the uh, the block to come up, and Uribe, the captain, will be very happy with that. Nice work for 17 all. Gee whiz, Peru are putting up a fabulous uh, response. Japan have got to concentrate. Arisa, what's she doing there? My goodness. Sato is denied it. It's going to be a, a, a timeout. Well, between the captain and the libero. Let's have a look. There's much shaking of the ball. No, it didn't wobble that much. Just a total misunderstanding. Kamori should have gone. Peru. Wow. It's gone a bit quiet in the Metropolitan. The Brazilian coaches worldwide have got a great reputation for a forceful attitude. One of the great coaches of all time, of course, Jose Guimarães. Brazilian coach, good friend, I have to say. And he is wonderful television because he absolutely wears his heart on his sleeve. And he's not afraid to tell them where they're going wrong. Ha, that's an understatement. Right, Peru in the lead, 1817. The nails are definitely being bitten a little bit here in Japan, but that's another big hit. And a good conversion from Sagoka. 18 all. She's down the line. Another good set. Fabulous set there from Miyashita. It's just perfectly in the zone. 18 all. Where's the block? It's not there, that's for sure. Uribe was absolutely over that, and you knew. She was going to come up with a quick one because that was the plan. And the setter, Munoz, she knew it in advance. Uribe takes the lead. 19-18. Ooh, well, OK, into the net and 19 all. But again, the youngster denied that. Frias. This is important for the setter now to get a good service away. Yashita. You can feel the tension on that face, can't you? She's got a big responsibility, does well. Middle court. That is a really good block. Beautiful work from Araki, together with Nagaoka. Yeah, don't they do well there? Covered it. They missed a couple of those early. Tried to get it through the block, but Nagaoka's left hand denies and beautifully executes for 20.
Dink over the top, well played, Koga. Nagoka does it, it's in, it's down the line, it's 21-19. That was really important rally and a really important point for Japan. But look at that intervention, great work from Koga. I told you she was an all-rounder. Wonderful athleticism, kept the ball alive, finished by the opposite, and that was good work for timeout now, called by Peru. Well, they have been pushed close, much, much closer than anybody anticipated here. Peru have been in seven Olympic Games, but they haven't been in one since the year 2000. This would be an enormous achievement. It's a long way to go here in Tokyo. And again, their sponsors have just come in. Herbal Life have just come in to the picture. And I know their representative here, Silvana, is so, so ambitious to, uh, to see the team do well. And it's such an important thing to have the financial support from around the world. You never know, Peru just might surprise a few. Sauri, Sauri Kimura. She's the captain. She is the poster girl of Japan. Has been for many years. Probably 10 years since I've been covering. I remember seeing Sauri's name. 21 19 then. Japan in the lead, first set. Miyashita who has got the setting responsibilities. She will come forward. Little touch there, it might be good enough. Oh, Raki, I think. Well, that was a surprise. It didn't go through the process of transition there. Koga has been highlighted. Maybe she, she was in the middle blocker's position. Koga took it on herself, pick up the point. It was. Don't forget, it was 1918 to Peru. Four in a row for Japan. Good block. A little bit too far away, but oh, didn't she do well? That was really, really excellent play from the outside hitter. Watch this, she's a long way, but got a very big hit down the line, and oh, yo, 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 Nagoka, the pain of a missed opportunity. Twenty twenty two. Kala Rueda. This time Koga gets it through the block and a long way back, but that is going to be now Japan's point at a crucial stage. That was very much needed. Again, the accuracy of the set was not quite good enough, putting pressure on. Here's Koga this time. 23-20. She's had success at the serve line. Better. That is... Super work from Sauri to keep it in play. They need to do it all again, and they haven't managed it. Once more, it's a fabulous piece of play from Angela Lever. Yeah, gets a fabulous angle on that one, follows it through. And it's always good to get the line that you approach and getting the arm, the shoulder and the arm in that same line. It adds a 21-23. There you go, that is a fabulous shot. How many times have we said that? Nagaoka, she's only missed, I think, two the whole set so far. There you see, set point. Oh, hey. <laughs> well, that's interesting. We're going to get a timeout here called, so there's no need for that substitution call at the moment. A little bit of warming up there as uh, Mae Yamaguchi, the middle blocker, very experienced. She's warming up, ready to come on. But, uh, well, it's crunch time here. Japan have taken the lead and have a really good lead at a very, very important time.
I can tell you, he will be, uh, Mauro will be probably losing his voice before the end of the week. You can feel that he really, really does like to force the points in every respect, verbal and on the court. Munoz waits patiently, she's the setter. She's really done beautifully, particularly out to the outside hitter's position, where we've seen Angela Leva regularly making hay. But now it's a question of can they field this and convert it quickly? They don't want a long rally here. They want to receive, put it in transition, get it to the net and kill. Japan, well, they won't even. Here we go. Araki. 24-21, set. Well, good blocking there by Saudi. It's a bit close, and it is Japan who've taken the set. Too close to the net. And that uh, is a really, really good response. It's going to be a challenge here. I think there's going to be a challenge. The final point challenge here for Mauro. I'm not surprised, to be quite honest. They have certain categories, in, out, net play. Let's have a look. The official review, was there a touch? Ooh, there was. Finger touch there. Oh, that's interesting. My Yamaguchi, she's only just come on, and I think that's going to be upheld. That's a successful challenge. They will continue, 22-24. That's great challenging. The system here has come to the rescue of Peru. An excellent work from the coach as well to watch that little fingertip touch. Yamaguchi was the touch. 22-24, Japan have got to do it all again. Here we go. It's the reverse, it's a big one. Oh, it's a little bit close, and it was. E, I can tell. Kimura, I tell you, she should not have played this. She should have done with just putting it straight back over. She was too close to the net. It was a foul on the play, and at 23-24, Japan still have the set point, but two in a row. They expected to be sitting down at this moment, working towards the second set. It hasn't happened. Well, Peru may well surprise a few more teams in this competition, I can tell you. They know what they're trying to do. They're listening. They're carrying through instructions. Ijeskis there has done a good job as the middle blocker. She's only 22, so again, there's a big future for many of these players. Look at that. I like his style, don't you? That's great. Shimada there is uh, also coming to court. 23-24. Shimara, number 13. Shimara Almeida Chavez, 22 years old. She's a setter, but coming with all the responsibility for the service. Will 13 be lucky? She's wearing that number. Here we go. Mid-court. Watch out. Set point. It's there. Japan have done it. Third time of asking. 25-23, Japan have taken the first set here in the Olympic qualifying campaign in Tokyo. The crowd loved it. Saudi relieved.
Well, you saw from that little highlights package, there was some spectacular action going on there. Couple of aces for Peru, and they were floaters, deceiving the uh, the Libero and Sauri. That was a surprise. But look at the attack, 16-12. That's about right. Blocks a little bit more, and uh, I have to say that they are attributable really to uh, the opposite Nagolka and. Uh, of course, we saw Koga involved uh, initially as well, but um, you know, some, the middle blockers, obviously, Arika Araki was responsible for many of those blocks as well. So, yeah, a really good opening set, that one. Particularly, you have to say, for Peru, because they looked to be struggling at first, and then they came back and put a lot of pressure on this host team. And this Brazilian coach, he has a style Everybody listens, watches, and gets very well motivated. You can tell. The youngsters are doing well. They're now settled into a, a rhythm and putting up a big battle. They still may succumb, but it's the first match for these teams. First day of competition. Three already completed. And uh, in the first, Italy was successful over Korea. Thailand over the Dominican Republic and the Netherlands over Kazakhstan. Four teams will go through. They'll all play each other in this round robin tournament. So, set two about to get underway. Here is number 12, Angela Leva, who has the outside hitter, has been very, very successful. A lot will depend on her degree of success during this particular exchange. Right, it's uh, Shimamura that comes to the line. Changed ends and one love to Japan in sets. Halfway. Well, a meter and a half back, two meters back from the, uh, from the net and Carla Rueda Accepted the challenge, broke through the block, and has taken the first point. One love. That wasn't so great, the pass initially. Koga does well. Peru are here once again, and it's another. Well, do you know that's in? That's a really, really clever piece of play. Instead of the power that we've seen from Angela Leva, watch that one. It is an absolutely exquisite shot over the block. Into the corner, great work to love. Again, a solid serve. Sauri picks it up and then comes through the middle. And again, beautiful work from the Libero. Leva just puts it over. Short, sharp, and again, twice, three times now. Another good rally. Leva is short. She was caught in two mines there. Caught in two minds after picking up a beautiful second point there with a spike. She was caught in two minds and in the end did nothing. 1-2, Japan in service. Frias, Magilora Frias was looking through the net there. That touch. Two all. Again, you hear the crowd, they go right up to the rooftop here. I think there's a 10, I think 10,000, maybe a few more than that inside this uh, Metropolitan Stadium. But it's, I thought I read somewhere the capacity was around 10,000. Certainly, all the tickets have been sold out for the Japan matches, and that's good. Araki through the middle of the block, three in a row for Japan, 3-2. Actually, it's Nagoka again there. I thought it was a Rocky, but uh, no, it's through the block. Leva couldn't make it. Caught it first, but it was uh, Nagoka. It's a consistent service. The last thing you want is an error on the serve. Here's a big chance. This for four in a row. And there she goes again. Wow. Watch out. The bomb hits right there. Look at this. It's a beautiful reverse. Araki comes up with a dummy strike. 
There's the dummy blow. That takes away the, uh, the block, certainly one of the blockers. That's great work. Look at that, 12 spikes at the moment. Fantastic. Nice play, good pick up there by the setter. <laughs> the setter's having to do a lot of scrambling. Naoka, Naoka. Wow. Koga does well, and then that, oh, there's a little bit of a, a joss, jostle at the top of the net right there. You see it a lot in uh, beach volleyball, the joust, not quite so often in indoor. Peru have the service at 3-4. No fuss service there. Koga can't get it down, but, uh, another chance here. Koga's again, no, it's going to come the other way. Out of play. Yeah, the angle was not great there from uh, Ijeskas. Just a little bit clumsy at the net right there. Three, five, three. Here's Koga. Again, it's a flat, floaty serve below the height of the uh, antennae. That's the ideal position. Short. Great pick-up, brilliant work there. Super defence, Japan. And another big block there. That might have gone long, but she took no chances there. That is it, though, really good play. Excellent work from uh, the Libero, Sato. Look at that, what a pick-up. And still in play, Nagoka puts it up with the, uh, the dig. And then look at that from Saudi. Kimura makes it 6-3. Koga. Nice play again. Second time, but it's still no good. Oh, it's too far. Uh, lucky, lucky, lucky. <laughs> good fortune there for Japan. My goodness, the set was just too far. Didn't she do well to put pressure on there and avoid fouling at the net? 7-3, oi, oi, oi. And a yellow card issued. I didn't see the incident, but that is a warning complaining that there would have been a problem, an infringement at the net. And Susanna doesn't have any of that, I can tell you. She's a no-nonsense referee and totally confident in her own ability to judge. Oh, what a block! That is a big, big time for the back hit to come through. And don't forget... Uh, 2-0 to start with for Peru, but since then it's 8-1 in terms of the numbers again. Aki celebrates in style, and why not? It was a beauty. We've got the, the first technical timeout in the second set, and it's 8-3. Well, they've certainly combined much, much better. There's a lot of smoothness. Transitions are going well. And the defence is really looking after itself as well. Some scrambling defence, good improvisation. Finishing off nicely, some good blocks as we saw that previous point. Frustrating for Peru that they're not breaking through. They're, they're doing well, but they can't break through when they've got the ball. Well, I don't know where you're watching in the world, of course, but uh, one thing I do know, that uh, you're having some fantastic FIVB Olympic qualifying volleyball. We've got, uh, this is the fourth match. Every day we cover, we've got four matches.
And of course, with eight teams playing, an extraordinary amount of entertainment in prospect. I hope you can enjoy wall to wall coverage, really, over the next uh, 10 days or so. Eight. Yeah, Koga doesn't miss many. She's had a really good series of serves there, but since the technical. And again, she'll still be smarting from the fact that she's missed three big spikes from the block from Peru. Again, just have a really, really late from the captain Uribe. Murta Uribe, she was so slow getting there. Wow, fantastic save. Koga just showed what a valuable player she is. The 19-year-old just flies to her right with a dive that saves brilliantly. That is, a, that is a, such a skill, to anticipate and then drive to the right. OK, we concentrated there, our camera on the on Zauri, who... But it was before that, it was the save and the dive that caused the problems for Peru. 10-4. Still in play. Too close. Too close to the net from the set. And Peru struggling a little bit with the quality of their transition. 11-4. Sauri smiling now. Yeah, time out, Peru. You know, that, I'm not surprised with that. Araki's had a really solid game as middle blocker. And Koga, although she missed a few at outside hitter position. I love him. I absolutely love him. No mistake. He makes it absolutely clear what he wants. There you can see Japan, a three and then a four. That's momentum. And I have to remind you again, they were two love down at the opening of this set. So that's a big change around. So Peru have only picked up two points in the last 13. Lieva, the outside hitter, she was successful in the first set, not so much in the second. Right, here we go, timeout complete, 90 seconds done. And the important middle order, keeping the aggression, keeping the concentration. Koga is looking to try and pick up some points here. Araki's at the line. Down from the backcourt. And Araki does really well. Oh, what a shot there. And again, it's Saudi Kimura. But Araki does brilliantly there. Watch Araki and then Kimura who finishes it off. Down the line, beautiful work. Now, you see, that's thinking. And that's what Koga didn't do. She will learn. She will learn that variety is very, very big friend of the attacker. Araki again. It's having a big influence on this match so far. Look at that. It's a flat service. It's a floater. And there was a lot of movement. The ball died on the uh, receiver. Thirteen four. Araki. She's in the mood. You can feel it. Again, another floater that dies, but picked up this time. Rueda did well, it's another point for 14-8. And again, the youngster, 14-4, uh, I beg your pardon. Number eight was the, uh, the number I was looking at of the, the spiker, Frias. 14-4 the score. Araki, once more, absolutely in control of this set. 
Leva does well. Rias does not do so well. Saudi again, but nicely kept alive. And Leva was involved right there. Frias again comes through the middle this time. She looks like she needs a little bit of confidence boosting, doesn't she? We've got a substitution here. And it is Freyas that's coming off. Isn't that interesting? Because I would have done exactly the same there if, if coach. I just need to have a chat and say, come on, you really need to give us a bit more aggression. You're walking around the court without that bubble and that confidence. That's so necessary. Got all the skills. Here we go. Oh, you beauty. Still in play. Nagoka tries to just dink one. It doesn't come off. Maybe this time, whoa, huge hit, but still alive. We're still in play at the joust. The outside hitter successful this time, and that was Rueda. Carla Rueda. Rueda. I've been reliably informed. Good girl, 6.14. This is a big mountain to climb. I tell you, I'm hoping to go and have a look at Mount Fuji on Monday. Let's see whether or not Peru can actually find Mount Fuji easy to climb or not right here, because it's a big order. Task. Well, they've got seven. 7.14 on the lower slopes right here. Lots of mountains in Peru, of course. They come from Lima on the coast, a lot of these players. Japan, they can't take anything easily and they don't there. 15-7, so important, they pick up the pace again. They can't be watching the scoreboard, look at that. Through the single block of Rueda, that's unbelievable. She will not believe that that happened. Oh my goodness, good hit. Strong, strong angle. 15-7, Nagoka at the line. Little touches, not good enough. It's come reverse to Nagoka again! What a beautiful set that was. Fabulous work from Aruka Miyashita. It comes back to Nagoka and she has had a magnificent time. Well, we saw 12 spikes before, so that must be, what, 14 or 15 spikes now. And she is having a wonderful, wonderful match. Technical timeout, 16-7, Japan in control. Well, it's crunch time now, isn't it, for Peru? They can't afford to go two down. It looks very much as if they will. 16-7 is the score in this second set. And Japan have really found a rhythm. And this girl with the ball right here, Nagoka, the opposite, just 24 years old. What a future for her as well. Koga, 19. Nagoka, 24. And he, uh, Raki, of course, the middle block. But uh, there are some youngsters coming through for Japan. And here is a big star in the making. 
Nagoka, best outside spiker in the 2015 Asian Women's Club Championship MVP. Her, her career so far littered with awards. Concentration. And your concentration, you look at the scoreboard and you think, oh my goodness, this is what happened. Where were the blocks there? No problem there for uh, Miyashita to set it up. And Shimamura says, thanks a lot. Time out again, and he needs to really get them up. They are dropping their heads, and that's not a good sign. Just look at this. OK, Peru picked up their three, but look, since then, four in a row for 18-7. I love how demonstrative these coaches are, it's great. We're not that intrusive, are we? We're just standing back a little bit with the cameras, which is nice. But uh, great work. Well, for a lot of them, of course, there's the captain, uh, Yuri, but, but for a lot of them, this will be their first time in Japan. And it's a wonderful, wonderful experience. Fantastic for all of us. Come back to one of our favorite places on the planet. Everything works so well. We're in a beautiful part of Tokyo as well. National Stadium getting rebuilt here for the 2020 Olympics right next door. There's parks. It's been a beautiful, sunny, late spring. Day to day, it's gorgeous. And there, when it's working, the rhythm the oil of the engine is just purring, I can tell you, it's fabulous. Look at this, Regalo tries it, but Sauri, the captain, absolutely gets all around it and makes the brilliant block. 19-7. Well, I don't mean to be defeatist on behalf of Peru, but they've really got to pick their game up here. They've got to put a bit of pressure on, stay lively. Manabe will be really happy with the situation at the moment. Even when they're not playing it, they're practicing it. Great discipline. There's Koga, the other sensation, young sensation. It's off the block. It's back in with uh, Japan in service at 28. We get a substitution, and uh, Koga comes off. On immediately will go uh, Ishii, Yuki Ishii. Again, a youngster, relatively speaking, 24 years old, wing spiker. <laughs> Eva does well, absolutely. Angela Leva. Look at the angle here. Again, she winds it up beautifully, plays it into the uh, the setter. Miyashita, and it goes out of play. Okay, this is interesting. So, Sauri will take a break. On comes uh, Sayasu. Kotoki Sayasu, 26 year old. Well, that's interesting because she. Uh, can play at Libero as well. Good, solid receiving, great passing, fabulous finish. Yeah, look at that, that is rhythm, isn't it? No wonder they celebrate it because it was so, so comprehensive. Great attack. That's how to move from transition, receiving up to the net. 21-9. Leva tries, but doesn't succeed in the dink. Nagoka makes it off the block, coming from the back court. It doesn't matter where she is, she, she just causes fear in the opposition. Our overhead camera brings up that beautifully. Obviously, she's got to not cross that back line, the three-meter, ten-foot line. Uh, and come to ground before she's actually hit it. The 
block was good. Oh, my goodness. Everything is going Japan's way at the moment. They were under pressure in the first set, but it's all one-way traffic, one-way street. Celebration time. It's miles all round in Japan at the moment. 23-9. And, of course, with Korea losing earlier today, the first match against Italy, their smile is even broader. One team from the Asian competition will go through automatically. So the top qualifier from Asia will go and Wow, Nagoka has been an absolute star. There she is. We go again, it's in play. Leva makes it this time. Again, it's the angle. There must, there might have been a little bit of a touch off the net as well. They've made double points. Here's Carla Rueda. Still loads of set points, 14 of them. Wow. Here we go, set point Japan. Good block. Who's got this one? It's in, it's down, it's set. Ten. Excellent work there, and immediately it was Ishii, Yuki Ishii, who taken over from Saudi, that comes in, plays the point. Valuable experience there, and a big, big smile to boot. Great work, 25-10. We're going to have a little break now. It's going to be, I think, five minutes uh, where before we get back onto court. A little bit of entertainment inside this Metropolitan uh, Gymnasium. And uh, we'll be back in play in just a while. I hope you can uh, stay with us and see the rest of this fascinating battle. Japan versus Peru. Well, just to uh, explain a little bit here, that second set, it was all Japan. After they lost the first two points, look at the attacks, 14 over 7. The blocks were successful as well. Look at the digs. Wow, that is really, really impressive. I have to say, the libero particularly, Arisa Sato, did brilliantly well. Uh, every single player in that Japanese squad has got all-round potential. Another couple of minutes of uh, host entertainment uh, before we get underway. But uh, two sets to love in favour of Japan at the moment. And Peru listening intently to instructions from their Brazilian coach.
セットのスタッツをご紹介しますエースの数日本が3本アタック数は日本が14ペルーが7エラーの数日本が3ペルーは6ありましたブロックは日本が2本止めていますUh, we're just getting prepared for the third set. And a lot of the crowd here, of course, would hope that it's the final set. But Peru, well, they fought bravely in the first, but it's been a difficult, difficult time in the second. So they've been totally dominated in every aspect in that second set. Japan, just to let you know, they're fifth ranked against the 21st ranked from Peru. So they should be certainly favorites for this particular match. And in fact, they'll probably manage it in three, but you never know. Interestingly, Japan actually won the, the sport's first ever gold medal in 1964. They won it again in 76, but 64 here in Tokyo. And although this particular stadium was one of the stadia for the 64 Olympics, it's been totally renovated since then, of course. But uh, it was not one that volleyball was being played in. It's uh, another occasion. I was hoping to be able to tell you that it was the golden dawn of Japanese volleyball, but it's not quite the truth. And I always tell the truth. Japan, one love in the third. Ishii, Ishii. Uh, Yuki Ishii, 24. In some Mitsu Springs, is she? Uh, is the club she plays for? Just having a look at my notes here. Another big point for Two Love. They are absolutely controlling every aspect of this at the moment. Just watch. Great shot. Wow, over the top, how did she spot that one? They love her, don't they? Oh, and again, they can't do anything wrong. Araki's right there, on the button again. It's magical moments. Miyashita was there, but it was Araki that controlled that angle. Beautiful work, three love. Something special about a block that works well. Oy, and again. Okay, this time it does get through. Ugh. Leva celebrates it. But again, there's no big smile and feeling good about life. It's all... Well, that was unlucky, actually, wasn't it? Because uh, Miyashita almost got it back. It's a bit loopy, that one. Difficult. Wow, what a hit. Again, looping around this time. And Araki comes around the, the setter, beautifully played, out to that opposite position for one. What can he do? It's very, very tough. What can he do? Wow, cannot believe the angle they got on that block. So they beat the duo there on that right post have been called upon so often. There you go, Nagoka this time. She's had a magnificent match. Miu Nagoka. Here's Miyashita. Flat floater. Okay, this time Peru do come. With the point there on receiving, 2-4. The challenge is to get it into a really dangerous zone and then convert as quickly as possible. Two-five. You beauty. It's an absolute cracking shot. Not for the first, and that's the third play 
that we've seen from Yuki Ishii that has totally opened up the defense. Cannot believe that she didn't play that hard through the block. Just so clever. Here she is. She's an all brown player, that's for sure. And sets it with the dig and puts it up. And it's uh, Sauri, I think, that makes it. But Ishii is the one that passed it beautifully. Gee, if she's not actually converting, she's setting it up. Look at that. That is a fabulous shot. It was from way out, but what an angle she came in on. That's the perfect outside hitter's angle. Lots of options. 7-2. Sauri is there again, a little dink, and it's good. A little bit unfortunate, but I have to say, the first technical, and they've reached it in no time at all with total control. Well, Japan's uh, performance at the moment will certainly give a lot of the host fans huge, huge uh, confidence that they can go on from here. They won the bronze medal in London four years ago, beating Korea. They have certainly big ambitions to improve on that. Japan finished fifth in the FIVB Women's World Cup 2015. They finished sixth in the World Grand Prix, which is a bit of a disappointment, to be quite honest. But certainly with this kind of form, they will have significant ambitions to be higher up the scale than that. Of course, the teams, a certain number of teams already qualified, of course. China, Brazil, USA. And, uh, Cameroon, I believe, is all, already qualified. Seven teams already going to Rio. We're going to, at the end of this competition, have four more, and then there's Puerto Rico, have one more to add to that. Make it 12 in total. What a fabulous shot from Saudi there, but uh, un unbelievably uh, returned by the Peruvian. But there was a lot of spin, side spin on it. Yeah, a little unlucky for Meraki right there. Leva has done well, but I wish she would smile a little bit and get herself up. She needs to be just relaxing a fraction. What a good touch there, Araki, but it's still in play. 3-8. Off the block. Off the block and away for 4-8. Three in a row here for... Peru. Yeah, Nagoka just tipped it. Saudi can't get that one down. It's good scramble retrieving. Nice. Oh, oh what a pickup that was. Now, this is the big one. No, oh, Saudi doesn't put it in. Again, really intelligent play. A despairing dive was no good from Yujeskas. Yeah, well played, Saudi. Right on the line. Well, we caught uh, Yuki Ishii doing a similar kind of shot. Here's Araki at the line at 9-4. Ooh, right in the zone. All of you youngsters have got to look at this one because I tell you what, that was the perfect run in. Look at this. She came from deep. It was a fantastic set. And look at the angle on it and the arm. The ball is in front of the shoulder. So she, everything is looking forward and absolutely smashed it to smithereens. Great shot. And that is another short set. Big play, Koga. I beg your pardon, it was Haru Shimamura. 
I saw an eight, not a nine. Shimamura picks it up nicely down through the middle for 10 5. Nagoka is at the line. Oh, and through the block, but it should touch for six, seven, uh, six, ten. It was a bit close and a bit nervy moment for Mieta Uribe, but she did well. There she is, the captain. The sticky tape on her fingers. Oh, 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 scrambling there. That was not great. Oh! Miyashita tried to play it down. There she goes. This time she plays it short. That's no good. That wasn't great. Now they got to block it. Oh, well played. Good work, Saudi. But through the block and off the block. That is 7 10. Well, a couple of errors there. Concentration has got to keep going. It's fair enough to try, but Leva was awake for that one. It was, in fact, uh, Shimamura that touched it down onto the Japanese side. 7-10. Leva, hands on knees, concentrating. It's in play. Down through the middle from the back court. That was Nagoka, but then that's out of play. It's going to be a... Yeah, I think the... Yeah, the referee needs a, a view of it. Yeah, the referee needs a view of it right here. There's the challenge. There we go. Challenge from... Peru. To be quite honest, I can't establish at the moment whether it was for the net. Here's the review. Ah, it was for the touch. I don't think there was a touch, was there? Don't think there was. I don't think there was. I think Miyashita, Haruka Miyashita missed it. I think it's going to be unsuccessful. Oh, let's have a look. She, ah, nowhere near. Unsuccessful challenge there for sure. Yep, 11-7. Once again, though, I have to say it's very, very good refereeing by Susana Ramirez. Timeout has been called by Peru, and it, again, they're just lacking in several areas on the court. They're working hard, and they've got strengths, they've got strong positions, but it's the general movement. They can scramble well, but can they actually set up a real good form transition? Here we go, 12-7, that's a really good save, but here they come again, Japan are really very, very dominant at the moment, and that at 13-7, Saudi is controlling that outside hitter's position beautifully. But every time they make the substitution, every time they change positions, they rotate, they've got a danger player coming in to very, very much pressurise this Peruvian team. Very difficult for Peru. Again, good blocking potential. It's a reverse. Nagaoka comes up, but a good save there from Uribe. Japan continuing the pressure. It's a short one. And again, good distribution. Good finish. 
and they are in total control at the moment. Excellent play there. Shimamura finishes off a short set. 14 points to seven. There are no worries here at the moment, but they just got to keep that out of play. Off the service there from Sauri. Lifts her head in disappointment, but uh, she's done enough to show that they're going to be very competitive in this particular competition. I think we're... Uh, we're going to be seeing certainly the host getting very, very close to a, uh, a position in Rio. That's out of play, I think, as well. Ouch. Two services in a row, 15-8. Shimamura at the line. Oh, it's in, it's a great floater. It goes deep. They'll take the second technical timeout now. And I tell you, it's all Japan at the moment. Nothing could be better at the moment. It's all so very successful. Wow. I can tell you now, that first match is always difficult. Manabi must be really having to pinch himself to see how smooth all his uh, plans and programs are going. That is a great shot. <laughs> An optimistic Suggestion by Palacios that that was out. It was nowhere near out. We're certainly in the final straight of this particular match. Just started the last 100 metres of the 400-metre run, so to speak. 10,000 people inside this Metropolitan Gymnasium and they are really appreciating the skills of their heroes. Oh, I suppose I should say heroines right here. Koga's been left on the, the bench at the moment. But, uh, we've got Shimamura. We've got uh, Yuki Ishii. Obviously, Saori as well. The hero of the night, really, player of the tournament, uh, player of the match at the moment, Miyu Nagoka, number one. She's there, the lefty. Here's Shimamura, Araki at the centre. Wow, they can see the amusement. That's lovely to see there from Munoz, the setter. Munoz plays it reverse, still in play. Here's a chance for 17, bit too close to the net. Oh, that's not a great set from Miyashita. No, she won't be remembering that one when she goes to bed tonight, that's for sure. Many other plays that she will remember, though. What a great player Risisato is. Fabulous player. Here she goes. No, it wasn't it, it was Sauri. Another play for Japan, and it's again Yuki Ichi. She hasn't put a foot wrong since she came. Good finishing, lovely placement. 17-9. Here is the setter. Oh, it's going to be competed for. Oh, it's still there. Well done, Sato. Oh, and again, a little bit too close to the net for comfort. 10 10-17. 10-17. Peru have got to make a few points here. Well, that's a good start, but uh, still not there. Where are the blocks? Where are the blocks? There they are. They did they well, almost did the job. Even if you don't get the block down and back to the uh, opposition, keeping it alive, you've got to get a good, good touch on it. That was the first option there from Nagaoka. It just went out of play. 11-17.
that dive, didn't it? My goodness. Oh, again, it's a Yuki special. Is she, see, she mixes up her attack so Shot, cross court, fabulous angle, no chance at all there for Yijeska. Palacios in the background, Almeida comes uh, back on. Almeida, she's the setter. So Munoz has taken, I think she might have been taking a break, yeah. Angle's no good. Salary says, go on, chase it. Okay, that's good. Like to see some excitement and smiles. And out for the first time here, Yuki, she comes off. As she goes back on, she is uh, a libero normally. So for defending, got two liberos there, but that's all. Fabulous work, Araki. Again, short, sharp set. Just look at this. They knew exactly what they were doing, and there, there's only a single defender, and she's not going to do anything against Araki's power. It was a challenge. Challenge called. Ooh. I think they might regret this one. I don't think that was even close to the line, was it? Nah. Well in. Well in. <laughs> Not even. Who gave him that advice? My goodness. Araki comes off after making that big play. And for the first time tonight, we see Nabea. Yuri Nabea. Outside hitter, 22 years old. He can come to the line. There we go. Big moment tonight for her. Again, it's a floaty, not much topspin on that. Here we go now again. Chance here, Sauri! Again, good placement. Peru struggled to get that one up, and that's out of play. It's 2012. Doesn't matter where she is, Sauri is always causing problems. Nabea did well, a little floaty serve. It's going to be a timeout called by Peru. And again, Nabea then goes back and starts the warm up procedures once again. She's not fully warmed up, of course, she's just come off the bench. Right. Can we see one last hurrah from Peru? They put up a good battle here in Impressed. They just lack the cooperation and continuity in their team. They've got some great individual players. The all-round performance by Japan, though, was impressive. Many more challenges to come for Japan, of course. We've got... Uh, Six more matches after this one. They'll be playing Kazakhstan tomorrow night. And then uh, they'll be playing the big showdown on the fourth night of the competition. Third day is actually a rest day, and then the third, fourth night will be Japan versus Korea. That will be a huge one. That atmosphere will definitely be uh, electric here. They won the bronze medal in London Olympics by beating Korea. Revenge is in the air, maybe? Who, so? Who knows? We'll see. 2012. Again, fabulous pickup. Lovely work, Nabea. That one, she's only just come on. Rescues the situation beautifully. Sauri's here. Sauri's there, but uh, doesn't quite get it down. Off the net. Yeah. Good pick up, Susanna. She saw it immediately. Look at this. The follow through. There you go. The follow through. And Tenai, everything there. Big error. Not many points to go now for victory here for Japan. And Me Nabea's done really well since she came on. Fabulous uh, receiving. Couple of occasions. 21 12. Saudi. Huge hit. Still going. Short, and again, <laughs> the scrambling defense. Oh, a little touch there's no good this time. 
Sauri, where are you? No, not here. Nagoka is! Oh, oh. Nagoka! Miyu Nagoka. She's topping off a really brilliant performance this evening. Look at that. Finds the angle. Hits the hand. But it goes down off Ijeskas. 22-12. They have been... And the third set. Totally dominant. There's another one. Saori is right there. I think she's the one that did it, to be quite honest. And the Libero, can you imagine? Normally the Libero, but Katoki Zayasu had the nerve to go up as well. Oh, no, it wasn't. It was number nine. I beg your pardon. OK, Shimamura. But it was Saori that won the point. That's what I expected. Palmer makes uh, court. Leva comes off. The outside hitter. 23-12. Two to go. Good pick up. Saudi's there. Out of play. 13 23. Nippon, Nippon. Well, they certainly deserve that uh, shout because they have been excellent. A few nerves in the first set, but since then, system has taken over and they've been fantastic. Araki has had a fabulous match. And look at that Nabea. Didn't she have a good hit? Introduction. Excellent work from Nabea. 14 23. Match point. Well, it's match point core, but on the scoreboard I've got uh, 14 23, so it's not match point. 14 23. That is in. That is now going to be match point Japan. 24-14, match point, and Sauri, the captain, has led a really, really impressive campaign here. The opening match is always difficult. The final match of four here on the first day of competition in Tokyo. And here, with this, uh, Sakoda is going to make the serve, gets it in play. Match point, Japan. Sauri could finish it! She doesn't. <laughs> Maybe again. Maybe again, though. Look out. No. It's coming on the other side. Peru desperately keep it in play. They are really working hard. Saudi's here this time. She makes it. 25-14. And Saudi tap, tops off a brilliant performance as captain. And Japan have totally dominated this one. 25-23. 25-10, 25-14. They have opened their account and they have certainly booked a little ticket on their road to Rio. I tell you, that was a very, very comprehensive performance. Excellent victory. There is the, I would say, the player of the match for me, 24-year-old Miyu Nagaoka. She was superb. Wow, Araki also. What a contribution she made. They all contributed few nervous moments in the opening set and from then on it was all one-way traffic and Saudi will be really happy with that one they face tomorrow evening Kazakhstan who lost earlier today to the Netherlands so they can expect a really impressive performance they've only got to top the uh, the performances by the Asian teams to have a place in the, the, the Olympic Games in Rio It'll be the top Asian team, plus three others that will go through from the eight teams here. Japan, they acknowledge the crowd, and the 10,000 will be going, going home very, very happy, very satisfied. India, also here, will be delighted. They're on the road. There you go. Here are the stats, the attacks again from that particular set. Japan totally dominated. Just that little extra error from Peru. Look at the blocks. They were important. Digs, which meant that uh, you have to think that Peru were on the 
defensive a lot of the time. But the overall match stats, I'm sure they will come up in just a couple of moments. But, uh, a very, very satisfactory performance. We will uh, just be witnessing the highlights, the replay action. Didn't she have a fabulous game, did uh, Nagoka? There's Araki as well. Good play. Even the ball coming back from uh, Rueda happened a lot. Araki missed that one, but uh, it's a really big experience. A lovely pick up there from Mayes Miyashita. Uh, Leiva played well. Great blocking from Araki, Ara, Araki as well. Sauri. You know why she's the captain. You know why she's the heroine. It's been superb. There the match stats. Overall, total confidence there. I don't know the actual point score difference, but uh, it can be worked out, I guess. 46 over 29, that's huge difference. Blocks 10 to 3. Very, very impressive. It was 3 love to Japan over Peru. And you have to say, they deserved every single point there. Very impressive. So, at the end of the first day of competition, we've had four matches. Italy successful, Thailand successful, Netherlands and now Japan. Hope you've enjoyed the competition that we've showed you. Join us again tomorrow. This is John Burgess saying goodbye from Tokyo. <laughs>